And hello again, this is Jim Ledoux. I'm going to go ahead and give you a debrief on the winter hazards analysis for this Cheyenne simulation during the short-term forecast phase. This is between 23 and 0 Z on January 27th. So my favorite procedure is the one that I forced you to deal with, although you were welcome to uh, adjust it as you saw fit. But I wanted to show uh, areas where I had strong winds that's the upper left panel. This is based on the her surface wind gust speed. Then also precipitation in the form of uh, freezing or frozen uh, uh, types. That is down here. So I have the MRMS Rala, the lowest altitude reflectivity, and also the her reflectivity uh, as an analysis and then into a forecast. Uh, if I can't see anything from either of those, or if I don't trust the her precip, I could take a look at the geostationary satellite data, the IR, to see if there's at least cloud cover. That looks like a good candidate precipitation producer, or the METARs themselves. And then the uh, combination of this, and then I have another procedure, which I'll get to in a minute, will tell me something about what kind of visibility we have. So do I have visibility from the precip, or is there evidence of blowing snow or blowing dust? So let's get right to it. I'm going to go ahead to the first panel. This one is the wind speed gusts, and I have the METARs as well. Let me go ahead and just turn on sampling. And here at 23Z, I mean, it's windy today. Let's just uh, get that right out the door. It's windy just about everywhere. The key thing, though, is that we have that front coming down uh, that we talked about earlier with the precip forcing mechanisms and with the shift change briefing. This front is coming down. Is it windy there where we have snow bands? And so um, this area, you can tell. Look at, look at anywhere where you have uh, that bright shaded color, almost white, is a wind speed gust of in excess of 40 knots. But we also have... Uh, areas in between are, that are at least 30 knots, so it's pretty widespread. Does that agree pretty well with the surface OBS? Well, in some places it does, in some places not so much. Um, look at, up here in Harding County, for example, we have a METAR with a wind gust of 36. That's a little bit short of what the HER thinks. And then uh, we also have one here with 32 knots. But, you know, again, large areas of at least 30 knots, that's for sure. Uh, down here, Ahead of the front, we have a lot of downslope, and we have substantial winds uh, gusting to 40. Uh, there, Laramie is gusting to 36 knots. And then a little bit farther east, uh, I think you're, you're talking about the same thing. Actually, this is Cheyenne itself. Uh, Laramie just just to the west with the 40-knot gust. So large areas of 40-knot winds. And I don't think we're going to have a problem with winds. And even in the post-frontal side, uh, we still have very strong winds up in this region, far northeast Wyoming into Montana. Okay, so I think let's get that out of the way. We zoom back out, and now we're going to take a look at the precipitation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit on uh, the IR imagery. I think we've seen this before, uh, the post-frontal band of clouds. This is the tail of that short wave, enhanced by frontogenesis, and it's definitely uh, swinging down. Um, as you can see right here, I also overlaid the, uh, the her P-type icons on top of that, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But there's substantial amounts there of uh, clouds with cloud top temperatures of minus 30 degrees and so forth. Why am I looking at that first? Because in the MR mess, we do have a gap in here, and the gap is says, okay, I, maybe I don't have radar coverage or maybe I don't have precip, but I do have METARs that show snow, and I have... Uh, cloud top temperatures that are right, right around minus 30 degrees and so forth. These are not just high cirrus like down here along the Colorado border. This is deep, moist clouds. And so I think that's something that we have to key on on, saying that, okay, maybe it's a factor of radar range here that's causing these gaps. And as a matter of fact, if we take a look at um, the precip Layer composite, or yeah, this is the layer composite reflectivity from the HER. And this whole area is filled in with what the HER thinks is at least 20 dBC. So certainly it does seem to be that uh, chances are there's precip in here. Certainly the uh, the observations at J, uh, KGCC, for example, has some very light snow. Uh, but further west, um, Sheridan down and then down south, this is all on the west or very close to the uh, Bighorn Range, you can see that there's much more substantial 
uh, amounts of snow. Um, I'll talk about visibility later, but you can see here, right here, three quarter mile visibility in snow with with strong winds is pretty uh, pretty snowy. So over here west of the Bighorn, I think we we also see snow. Visibilities are somewhat higher. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that uh, throughout this region, there is snow falling all the way out to the Black Hills. But we get farther enough east, Rapid City, it's raining. And in fact, rain is falling and quite likely across most of uh, South Dakota into far eastern Wyoming, just because the low level temps are so warm. So that's that one. How does this all contribute to visibility? We'll take a look at the uh, visibility plot right here and you can see that we have values in the bighorn that are really low okay that's not surprising it's up in the mountains this is the her visibility and the her visibility is a function of precipitation and or cloud cover uh, it's nothing blowing or drifting or anything like that and you can see that uh this is probably cloud cover in here up on the mountains but farther east Okay, near where we have the three-quarter mile of visibility that's measured, the HER thinks it's about 1.1 miles. Up by Sheridan, it thinks it's two miles, where it's actually three-quarter mile. Uh, farther west, it's K uh, C E Y. It's uh, two and a half mile visibility, but the HER thinks it's 2.29. That's pretty darn close. But over here, the HER doesn't think so much about visibility. And then up here in the Black Hills, where it's a little bit cooler, the visibility drops off, and of course, there might be some cloud cover hitting the ground as well. So there is there are areas of low visibility here. There's no doubt about that. And especially immediately downwind of the Bighorn, there's uh, some substantially low visibilities, even in the lower terrain. So any blowing snow or dust? Well, here's my dry land cloud RGB and surface OBS. And the reason why I'm looking at that is I'm looking for snow cover. So wherever you see blue, okay, and being blue, that's very bright in the 0.64 micron imagery, but not so much in the 0.87, and uh, certainly it, not in the 1.61. So I'm really emphasizing the blue-green values, and it shows up as this aqua color. Um, certainly some of the clouds show up that way, some of the frozen clouds, but I'm looking at the stationary stuff like here, out in southwest Wyoming, I got uh, snow cover. And then uh, closer in uh, here, I got snow cover. Okay, this is out west of Laramie, and there's some snow cover here as well, um, but not much around and east of the Laramie Range. I don't have that much, so I think this uh, the visibility that we see is, uh, in the HER is mostly precipitation and cloud cover here. Uh, and also, what visibility I see here, well, there really isn't that much affecting the METARs. I don't see very much in the way of blowing dust or, or haze or blowing snow ups. What does that say for my final analysis at 0z, roughly 0z? I'm plotting where I think there's freezing precipitation, actually frozen precipitation here in the form of snow. Uh, the values that are contoured with interior contours is uh, most likely more substantial snow near the Bighorn, northwest Wyoming, and then just west of the Black Hills. Well, on top of that, wind gusts greater than 30 or 40 knots. Actually, a lot of these is, is 40 knots in the shaded orange. And we have substantial regions, but pretty much everywhere is gusting at least 30 knots. And then visibility since I don't see any blowing snow, no evidence of that, at least at this point. I'm mostly looking at falling precip or cloud cover. Um, but you can see, actually, these contours that I have for snow is represented by visibility as well.